Hello and welcome. We saw in the previous course that in order to help us make an educated decision, we were looking for knowledge, that is, the probability of an event occurring in the future. And that in order to limit the uncertainty that makes choices and decisions so difficult. Following that purpose, we need to collect data and evolve from data to information and from information to knowledge. To do this, we use tools made available to us by descriptive analysis first, then diagnostic analysis to finally arrive at predictive modeling. Predictive modeling is based on two basic principles, correlation and regression, and on one assumption. The assumption, and it is a big one, is that if an event A occurring in the past has a consequence B occurring in the present, the same event A occurring in the present will have the same consequence B in the future. Philosophers will tell us it's not true. We can, however, observe it mathematically with the following two principles. First, the correlation, which is the observation of the dependence between two variables. There is a correlation when two variables evolve together. If one increases, the other also increases, and it is a positive correlation, or if one increases, the other decreases, and it is a negative correlation. The second principle is regression. Regression was first observed in 1886 by Sir Francis Galton, an anthropologist who studied the evolution of the size of human beings. He found that taller parents tended to have smaller children and shorter parents to have taller children. Indeed, to avoid having a world populated by extreme oversized and undersized people, nature implemented the balancing process that Francis Galton called the principle of regression towards mediocrity. It was pointed out that the term was unflattering and it became the principle of regression towards the mean. This principle is that if an observation tends to deviate from the average, the next observation will tend to get closer. These two principles will allow us to build a model. What is a model? A model is a simplification of reality in order to better study and understand it. We will talk about here mathematical models, but keep in mind that there are also physical models, such as the miniature reproduction of an aircraft that is put in a wind tunnel to study its behavior before risking a pilot. Let's start with the simplest model, the linear regression. We have two variables, x and y, whose relationship is represented on the scatter plot by a cloud of dots. We see there is a positive correlation. When x increases, so does y. Our goal, always the same, is to be able to predict the value of y if we know x. For this, we will simplify the relationship between x and y, that is to create a model and we will summarize this relationship with a line. This line has a formula, y equals ax plus b, where a is the slope and b the origin. If we know x, using the formula of our line, we can deduce the expected value of y. With a certain margin of error, which is all the weaker as our correlation is strong. How is this line calculated? In a very simple way, but with an important principle. In the absolute, there is an infinite number of possible lines and therefore several possible values for A, the slope, and B, the origin. 
for each value of a and b, so for every possible line, we will measure the distance between that line and every single point in our cloud. We will square these distances in order to have only positive values and we will sum them up. The line that best sums up our relationship between x and y will be the one with the lowest sum of squared distances. That's why we call it the least squares regression line. Minimizing the sum of distances is called a cost function or a loss function. This principle is important because it shows that our model is calculated by measuring distances. This method will not change. All the models we will see later, even the most sophisticated ones, are always based on a cost function and a measure of distances. The formula of our line, y equals ax plus b, becomes the formula of our model that we are going to write y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x, where beta 0 and beta 1 are called the model parameters. To sum up, a model is a simplification of reality, and predictive models use correlations and distance measurements to calculate probabilities. There are several kinds of predictive models. First, let's look at the two largest model families, supervised and unsupervised models. A supervised model learns to recognize a truth that is given as a reference, a truth that has been observed and recorded in the past. For an unsupervised model, there is no truth that can be given as a learning reference. These are most often segmentation or clustering models, again based on measurement of distances that aim to achieve the best possible separation of the most homogeneous groups possible. But there is no learning reference. The data is delivered as is to the algorithm that will find the best segment separations alone and supervised. A question often asked is, how do we know if the model is valid? In the case of a supervised model, this is quite simple since we have a learning reference. The prediction can therefore be compared with the observed reality once it has occurred. But in the case of an unsupervised model and in the absence of learning references, only the end user will be able to decide whether the model is valid or not, whether the segments are valid and usable based on their own experience and references. Within supervised models, we have regressions and classifications. A regression is intended to predict a number, a dimension. It can be a volume, a distance, a temperature, a price. A classifier is a model that will give us the probability for a new observation to belong to a category, to a class. For example, models analyzing images and labeling them. This is probably a cat, this is probably a dog, a tree, or a car. So we have four large types of models. Supervised models, for which we have a known truth, a learning reference. Unsupervised models, for which there is no learning reference. These are often segmentation models. And in supervised models, regression models that aim to predict a dimension, a number, and classification models or classifiers that calculate the probability of belonging to a class. The important thing to remember is that we are building models to simplify reality, that predictive models are based on the principles of correlation and regression, thus a calculation of distances, and that we have supervised and unsupervised models, regressions and classifications. Modeling is not easy. And we will see with our next course 
the challenges mothers have to face and the choices they have to make. See you next time.